Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and we're going to talk about Unify Mesh. So if you want to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire us for a project, including network design, there's a Hire Us button up at the top. If you want to support this channel out in other ways, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services you talk about on the channel, including shirts. People ask, where do you get those shirts from, Tom? And they any of the shirts we wear, well, not all of them, but a lot of them, we do uh, upload the designs and they are available for purchase online. So Unify Nano HD right here and wireless uplinking or meshing is a feature built into the Unify system. Unify, configuring wireless uplink. They have a whole help article here. This help article kind of explains what the wireless uplinking is. So here would be your Unify base AP and here's the different downlinks. So one of them does have a direct connection to a switch, but the downlinks are wirelessly meshed together with this one here. Now, sometimes people conflate mesh with uh, the ability to roam between networks. And by default, when you set up a Unify and set up the controller and set up all the access points and adopt them to one network and scatter these around a building, you can go from area to area to building and it automatically roams between them. That's roaming. Mesh is more what's depicted here, where we have power and we can power a device. We don't have the ability to run a cable to give it backhaul all the way back to a switch. So we wanted to actually use some of the ability it has to connect wirelessly to connect to another wireless device. Now, the good and bad. The good solves a problem for sure. The bad, it creates a problem. It creates a little bit of latency and it's going to obviously reduce a little bit of speed because now you're dedicating some of the resources of this particular uh, access point to connecting to another access point. And in the case when you get a couple hops deep, now you've added some latency because you have to convert from a wireless signal to a digital signal inside there that's got to be converted back to a different type of wireless to jump over to the next one and the process repeats with each hop. That's where your latency can come in. But when the goal is connectivity, and an example, we just put one of these in a library and due to the budget constraints, they didn't have the ability to run cable to the far ends of this library that was built well about 1950-ish. It was really, really nice architecture and tearing things up in that nice architecture to drill out and run wires wasn't practical, but they had electricity. So all we had to do was exactly like the setup we have right here. We installed some Unify access points and then in those corners where they needed connectivity so people could send emails or you know use their phones and still maintain wireless throughout the entire building. Those little corner areas, uh, we just put one of these bad boys and plugged it into an existing wall plug. So as you can see, this is only a PoE and a wirelessly uplinked access point. Now there is sometimes some confusion. I think this is Ubiquiti's fault. They had the mesh models and some confusion was those are the only ones that support it. There's actually quite a few different uh, devices that not only support it, they both also support multi-hop wireless uplink. So you can do multi. These ones are your basic ones, but like the AC Outdoor. So I've seen some confusion in the naming, um, but this list right here, and I'll leave a link to this help article from Unify, and they have how to set it up, how to configure everything, which I'm gonna show you how to do as well, and some best practices and how to dive into it. What we're going to be doing is making sure that allowing meshing to another access point is turned on and that it's turned on in the controller itself. Pretty easy to do. It also, but we're not gonna use it in this particular video, but it does have this as an option. When you are going and building these, when you're designing a topology, maybe you want it to favor one particular uplink versus the other, and that is a priority that you can set. We only have uh, this one studio demo one we have right here and two other access points in our network here. Um, so I'm just gonna let it pick whichever one it wants, but if I wanted to force it to favor one over the other, that is an option that can be set up. And it got some other details. They dive into some of the uh, planning processes on how to do this. All right, I'll show you the functionality of it. This is what it looks like when it's connected wirelessly. So we have the uh, New Better Wi-Fi. This is just a Nano HD mounted in the ceiling that my staff calls New Better Wi-Fi. This is the studio uh, table Nano HD, the one in front of me right here that's connected wirelessly. So it gives a little dotted link. And this is a base station that is uh, over in another area of our office. So it decided that this was the most efficient in which technically it is the closest one. It's only a few feet away. So this is what it connected to. As far as settings go, go over here to the devices and we'll look at the Pop this out, go to the config, scroll down, and here we go. Wireless uplink, this is turned on. So allow meshing to another access point. That does have to be turned on. I believe it's turned on uh, by default, but we change our network a lot, so uh, I'm not positive, but it, if it's not, that's all you gotta do, turn it on, and then you turn this on. Enable wireless link, uplink and enable 
uh, element adoption, make sure those things are on as well. So how does it actually work? Well, right now my, and we can go over here and pull this one back up and look at the clients. What clients connected? Tom's laptop, 3.18. Okay, that's my laptop and that's connected. So we're gonna go over here to the terminal and I've SSH'd into this already and all they did was do a uh, MCA-dump pipe grep Mac. And what I did is filter for Mac address and you can see which Mac addresses of which devices are connected and mine is in that list of what's connected. I just did it from the command line here just to show you that you can uh, because there is a delay in the Unify as you reboot or restart things before the Unify controller, maybe 30, 40 seconds, sometimes a minute before it gathers all the data coming from the devices and updates. But obviously you can SSH in because the devices will be up and running and start connecting clients prior to even the, the software getting refreshed. So I'm just confirming and that's what that command is right there. Now what you're seeing here is WaveMon and you can see my association, you can see my MAC address here and uh, you can see it ends in .76. So it just matches the MAC address that we've seen for when we did the MCA dump. So what I wanted to demo is exactly how fast that switching happens, both when you have the mesh, so I'm connected to here, and how fast it can roam to the other one. So one, the meshing solved the problem. We have this connectivity, and let's say I just didn't have wiring. But what happens when they roam between them? Because this is good where people kind of conflate this, and I've heard people say, well, maybe the Unify doesn't support roaming very well. Even in a mesh condition, it roams quite well. So uh, what I'll do, and I'll have the screen pulled up to show you me doing it at the same time, is I'm gonna unplug this device. It'll go dark, and as soon as it does go dark, will show how the connectivity works. So you're gonna hear a little uh, plug pop out and you're gonna watch this blink, blip, connect, done. Now, I've not enabled fast roaming or anything special to make that work. This is still the, uh, you know, other than the making sure those options I showed you are on for meshing, this is a default Unify setup for the network. The important part is when it comes to roaming that the devices themselves support it, which is another facet of this. So one, these do kind of solve some of the problems and they will pass back and forth. So as your devices come in and out of here, and I'm bringing all this up because we've done some of these deployments and we showed one in a large warehouse and how you do that planning is you're gonna have a little bit of overlap. So you have them all planned out and they can pass between there. But what if some of those areas you have that you wanna fill in gaps later, but you don't necessarily wanna go and uh, run wiring to, you can put it in. In the mesh and it will roam back over to the mesh and you can set the priority of where you want these to mesh back to and it kind of covers some of those gaps but this is also very dependent on making sure the client can roam back and forth as well now as far as you know re-establishing the mesh or anything like that it's just a matter of plugging it back in there's obviously a notice on the screen over there that the heartbeat was missed and uh, we'll go back over to the unify controller and everything stays up and running so the next thing we're going to do is figure out where my laptop wandered over to and do one more little piece of this demo. So right now this is still showing because it hasn't realized because of the timing that this is missing. But by the time it realizes it's missing, the data will start coming back and it'll show back up and refresh. But uh, it didn't break any connections on my computer. So I'm still perfectly fine. I'm still connected. Everything works perfectly fine on the internet. But let's SSH into something so we can show something actually working. Well, actually this did break because I unplugged it. So this particular SSH session is definitely dead. But let's uh, SSH into my forums, for example. So we'll go into something externally and I'll kick off HTOP. So HTOP's up and running and uh, you can see we got a connection here and we're gonna go ahead and move my computer to another uh, Wi-Fi. So let me figure out which Wi-Fi is it connected to now. It'll take a second and I'll determine it and then we'll uh, move me to the other one by disconnecting or rebooting that particular device. All right, we see that the Studio Nano went over here. This one, instead of connecting back over here, it's now on this. And my laptop has connected to the new better Nano Wi-Fi right here. So what we can do is pull this up, move this over, and uh, we'll go ahead and reboot it. So we go over here to the tools, debug terminal, open up a terminal into it. And we can close this and just type reboot. Now before I do that, you can see HTOP still running. I've been passing between different devices here even though I'm physically sitting still because I'm rebooting my Wi-Fi's. And uh, we're gonna go reboot and that should drop the connection, right? I uh, probably didn't catch it fast enough, 
but it's already connected over here. Before I can even get to the other screen, uh, it's already reestablished on one of the other devices and hopped over to there. And uh, you can see that even despite me rebooting it, I'm still logged in and SSH'd into uh, my forums and I have HTOP running. And after a few seconds, this will refresh. Like I said, it takes a second for the Unify system to refresh and figure out where things are. This will actually disappear in a second from here. And uh, yeah, everything works, but I didn't lose connection. I'm still here, I'm still connected, SSH'd into things. And one of my points being that yes, you can roam between them. And when you have a little bit of overlap like we do here, the system will choose the strongest, but the strongest uh, will be chosen first. But if the strongest gets rebooted, it'll jump to the next strongest and wander over. My guess would be uh, my laptop probably wandered back over to this one uh, since it rebooted and it was connected to the other one that's kind of a little bit further back. And then it decided that I rebooted this one. You can kind of see how all this works in real time. And I'm leaving everything at the default set. Settings. There are fine tuning and Unify has some best practice and details you can dive into. Kind of gets you the idea that yes, it works. Uh, we've done this at scale. We've done this uh, for larger companies. And of course it works perfectly fine here in our office and it can work perfectly fine at your house if you you know, have these set up across your uh, home network or small office network. Uh, if you have questions, comments, concerns, head over to the forums and we can talk about them in, over in depth. I'll of course leave a link below to our forums, easy enough to find. Uh, but for those wondering how to set it up, it's pretty easy, pretty straightforward to do. Uh, it's less than ideal. It's usually to solve a problem. It's not that you always want this turned on, but it does have the advantage when you um, have to update something or anything like that. So if you do have some overlapping coverage, so you can update one, reboot one, and uh, roll through it without having too much disruption to the users that are connected to it. It kind of depends on how you have them laid out. But uh, if you haven't, like I said, thoughts, comments, concerns, head over to the forums, and thank you. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.